the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. Everywhere Jesus went, crowds gathered. Often he would heal their sicknesses, but he was more interested in healing their hearts. Blessed are those who hear God's word and obey it. Important religious leaders came to hear Jesus, but everybody else did too. Moms and dads, shopkeepers and tax collectors, misfits and other people who did wrong things. The last will be first, and the first will be last. The religious leaders were angry Jesus chose to welcome everyone. He hangs out with sinners and even like eats with them. Jesus knew the hearts of the religious leaders. They believed that keeping all the rules made them closer to God than anyone else. So Jesus told them a story. There was a man who had two sons. Now, if Jesus were telling this story today, it might go a little something like this. There are two brothers. We'll call the older brother Will and the younger son, Jake. Uh, these two young men were just a little different from each other. Father, I finished planting the barley field, cleaned out the cow stalls, and fed the goats. All before breakfast? All before breakfast. Where's your brother? In bed. Jake, come get some breakfast. Oh, is it noon yet? I'm not getting up before noon. I need you to help your brother rebuild the shed. Don't we have servants to do that? Oh, I'm tired of people telling me what to do. I want to be in charge. As Jake considered, he realized that one day when his father was gone, his older brother and he would split all of the money, and then he would be at least half in charge. Why wait? I'll just take my share now. After breakfast, Jake found his father examining the damaged shed. I want my share of your money. Well, you'll get it. One day. Nope. I want it all right now. The father studied Jake with sadness in his eyes. Then he decided to let Jake learn the hard way. All right, you can have your share. Woo woo! So Jake took his half of the property in cash and then he packed up and headed off to travel the world on his own terms. So long, suckers! After days of travel, Jake finally arrived in a country where the sun was warm, the breeze was cool, and the lake water was as smooth as glass. Ah. This is the life. <laughs> Jake rented a beachfront villa. Dude ate whatever he wanted. Pizza for breakfast, Twinkies for lunch, ooh, ice cream for dinner. <laughs> he threw huge parties and gave away lavish gifts. Oh, Jake, you're like so amazing. Wow, is this the new SolarWare 2020 gaming system? Oh, you can have it, I'll get another. <laughs> Dude, you are the best. But soon? A famine swept the land. Food ran low. Huh. All I've got is ramen. I better go to the store. Jake checked his money pouch. It was nearly empty. Two pennies? But I had so much. Hey, uh, anyone have an extra PB&J? Um, like, no. Don't bug us. Jake had nothing left. At last, he was forced to work for a farmer taking care of the pigs. Sue-wee! Hey, pig, 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 pig. <laughs> Jake was so hungry, even the disgusting food scraps for the pigs looked pretty good. The crust is the best part of the sandwich, right? Or this? Don't you touch that there banana peel. It's for the pigs. <laughs> this is so not kosher. As Jake crouched down in that miserable mud with those pigs, he couldn't help thinking of home. My father's servants have more than enough to eat, and here I am practically dying of hunger. I should go home. I will go home. I'll say, um, Father, 
I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you. I'm no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Yeah, that's good, right? Jake got right up and headed home. The journey took a lot longer on foot, and he was weak with hunger. Sinned against heaven, sinned against you, I'm no longer worthy. At last, Jake reached his hometown. Nobody even recognized him as he shuffled down the road, dusty and ragged. I'll just sneak into the house the back way. But as Jake neared his home, he saw someone standing on the porch. I really hope that's not Will. In an instant, the figure on the porch leapt down and began to run. The man raced down the walk and flung open the gate. Wait, that's, it's Dad. Jake's father ran along the dusty road toward his son. Dad, I, my son. The father threw his arms around Jake and kissed him. Jake swallowed hard and stepped back. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I, I'm no longer fit to be called your son. But Jake's father was too full of laughter and tears to listen to any of this. Instead, he hugged his son again and led him back to the house, calling for the servants. Quick, uh, bring the best robe and put it on him. Uh, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it, and let's have a feast and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. Wow, Dad, uh, I don't deserve any of this. I don't know what to say except thank you. So the father had freely forgiven the younger son, but the story wasn't over yet because Jake's older brother, Will, you remember him? He was out working hard in the fields and well, Will would turn out to be far less forgiving than his father. <laughs>